What do you mean we have another anning? Another anning? Oh, my God. We're going to have to change this to, like, the, the anning cheapo hour. Oh, all right. Bring it on. Welcome back. Yeah, whoa, you heard it right. Anning again on the Cheapo Zone. I'm telling you, just nuts. Anning is coming out with so many new multimeters. I can't even keep track lately. It's just insane. But you know what? It's a good form of insanity because the more multimeters, the happier we are. <laughs> the M167, a tiny little multimeter from Anning. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot, though. It's smart, but it just does not do a whole lot. Uh, NCV... Um, current to a degree volts ACDC uh, and continuity but uh, that's it that's all um, really basic bare bones here now it's not a do-all multimeter that's not what it's designed to be it's designed to be something that is quick and easy to use well is it is it any good let's find out so what do you get in the box? Well, not too much. You get this, what they call a digital multimeter user manual. It's really just another pullout. It just has the basic specs. Um, yeah, that's it, that's all. Comes in Chinese as well. And you get your nice box, but look at that, it's a generic box. It doesn't say adding, no, it just says digital multimeter. So really, they can bundle this with anything. That's probably because adding is not the OEM on this multimeter. I'm not sure who is exactly, but it's definitely not adding. Um, something else that's kind of funky, if you take a close look, you can tell this is just a label they stuck on. I can peel that off with my fingernail and it just put anything there I wanted to. Anything. Um, no, that's just weird. And finally, you get some uber cheesy test leads. Yeah, I call them cheesy. Lots of cheese, extra cheese. Wow, they didn't slack on the cheese. Um, and why are they so cheesy? Well, it's the cheap plastic, cheap cheesy plastic. And you know what? It just does not, it does not bode good. I wouldn't want to measure much with these. It's just, oh. And look at the shrouds, look at the shroud. I mean, it's really sad. It's a tiny little shroud. Now, yes, it fits the meter okay. It's, it's not going anywhere. It sticks in there fine, but I mean, just crappy gauged wire and it's really short and it's just cheesy, cheesy test leads. Now, you know what? It's so cheesy, we gotta try the pull test. The pull test. Oh, come on. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Oh, it's passing the pull test. Didn't come off. So, well, it's cheesy, but it passed the pull test. Whew. In terms of size, you can see this is one pretty small multimeter. Now, it's not the smallest. I mean, we've got the little 830 over here, and believe it or not, I've got an 8 meter smaller than the 830, but yeah, just to give you a rough ballpark figure of where it stands in the size department. Not gonna take up a lot of space on the workbench, let's put it that way, uh, compared to that honking 181A over here. Uh, it is definitely small, but uh, yeah, more on the small side, definitely portable, definitely pocketable, definitely something you can throw in the car. So first impressions are it is pretty plasticky cheap. It doesn't have much weight to it at all. It's very light. Uh, no plastic or rubberized boot. You just have this hard plastic outer shell. A bit of a grip here on the side. But um, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't reek of quality. Let's put it that way. The buttons themselves, though, are actually not bad. They have a soft touch feel, so they are good. Sitting in DC precision right now, 4.992 volts coming up. 5.000 is what we want to see, but fear not, it is still within spec. Take a close look at that screen. That is 4,000 counts. Uh, refresh rate is three times per second. Um, mm, you know, not bad. It's pretty clear. Now, the funny thing is when you put that backlight on, yeah, look at that. We have sort of a honeycomb effect going on here. So a little weird looking, I have to say. Maybe they, they did a boo-boo when they put the uh, um, uh, the backing on for the backlight, but uh, a little weird. So anyway, there it is. Okay. Welcome back to another multimeter. <laughs> This week's fan. Oh, you know, this might be a personal thing. Maybe it doesn't even bother you, but boy, it bothers me. Multimeters with crazy names! Hey Bob, can I borrow your Master Fui? Sure, Jim, just make sure you give me back my 0520060-2. Ah. Hey, I like the brand, but Rushui? Really? 
Oh, the Ann meter. I wonder where Ann is right now. Oh, and my very favorite. Hey, let's just not give it a name at all. Oh, wow. When it comes to good marketing, a name is everything. Make it simple, concise, and to the point. We don't need anything crazy, because guess what? We're never going to remember crazy. Fluke, Aztec, Keysight, Unity, Kaiweeds. Hey, they got something all in common. They're all easy to remember. Get it? <laughs> Already, we're in AC mode right now. I've got the Sanwa out. And uh, 120.9 volts, true RMS. Let's just hold that. 120.8, actually. And let's just see what the anning is going to give us in reference to the Sanwa. Here we go. Remember that auto, auto range. And what do we have here? 121.8. So slightly higher than the Sanwa, but uh, definitely within spec. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of current measuring next. They've got that current input covered, that little safety sticker. It has been removed. Let's see if it's any good in the current range. Now we have some inconsistencies in terms of the current ranges. According to the spec sheet, DC amps uh, up to 10 amps. Um, not so. On the meter itself, it's telling us we have 200 milliamp to 4 amps. So I'm probably going to go with the multimeter designation. Uh, I have 3.2 amps about to go into the adding. Here we go. And had no problems picking that up. 3.2 amps. Beauty. Look at that 6.66 .66 amps. It's taking it. No problem. We're not getting any high current alarms either. So uh, it all seems to be okay. 6.40 maxes it out here. Uh, 6.72. So okay. It can definitely do more than 4 amps. Now remember in current mode, the milliamp and the amp uh, high current amps are one and the same, shares the same input. So you don't really have to worry about going over your milliamp range from 200 upwards. Yeah, sky is the limit. In terms of range speed and resistance, let's see. 900 ohm, 800, 7. Oh, not too bad, actually. Quite surprised being a smart meter. They're usually pretty slow, but uh, this one seems to be pretty fast. Okay, let's try nine mega ohms. Eight, seven, six, five. High resolution coming up. 2,000 counts. Uh, sorry, 4,000 count resolution at two mega ohm. And yeah, so all in all, uh, resistance wise, it's fairly fast to range. Good stuff. Already Aphrodite, it is that time again. It's continuity time. I'm not expecting much. I don't think you are either. Standard stock test probes. Oh my God, these are so cheesy. Three, two, one. Oh yes. Massive delay because it is a smart meter. So it takes a long time to realize it's in continuity mode. Oh, wow. Absolutely abhorred. Oh, now you do have that nice visual as you can see as well, but uh, yeah, just, just painfully slow. Okay, let's try some Probe Masters. Already Probe Masters, three, two, one. Yeah, if anything, it's perhaps a tad bit louder, but it is still painfully slow. Oh, not a meter for continuity. Sixty-five point nine decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. LED dial testing, eh, not gonna happen. Can't do it. Of course, another gripe of mine is it has no tilt stand. Oh, geez, Louise, no tilt stand. Why? I mean, this is a big enough meter. Could definitely use a tilt stand. Uh, instead, it's lying flat on the ground. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Fortunately, NCV, it's okay, but you know, it's pretty lame, not very uh, responsive. And it's just, we're talking bare bones, basic NCV here. Yeah. Easy breezy access to that battery housing. Look at that. One finger, bada boom, bada bing. There's our two AAA batteries. No screwdrivers needed. I like it. Now, unfortunately they covered the display with some plastic here, but it's like embedded deep, 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 deep. I don't want to scratch it, but oh my gosh, it's hard to... Oh, 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 oh. Ah, 
gosh, I actually had to take off the entire multimeter to access this because you can see that it's just it's just ridiculous what they've done. And now I gotta peel the tape off. Oh lord, why ending? Why? Oh, anyway, off finally. Oh man. Already teardown time, as you can see, not too much to this little multimeter. Whoa. I'm um, starting off with the reverse side of the, the housing. No shielding, no surprises. Powered by those two AAA batteries. Two contacts that are making uh, contact with PCB. Over here, we have the push button selector switch. Uh, nice soft touch buttons there. Not much going on, you can tell. Pretty basic in all of its workings. There's the infamous LCD display with the zebra strip. Uh, that's what I had to pull out to get that plastic off, that plastic protector, which was just nuts, nuts. All right, let's get to the meat and bones of it. Starting off with those input jacks, they are of the split variety. We see that everywhere in the cheapo zone. Uh, actually, the soldering is not bad, um, all things considered. So uh, it's, it's passable. Um, Moving up, now this is where it gets a little bit on the scary side. And so yeah, take a close look at that. That is all you've got for input protection. That tiny little shunt resistor. That's it, that's all. No big current shunt, nothing. And that is shared with both the milliamp and the high current input. So, oh my goodness, yeah, definitely uh, not a great idea. Now on the voltage side, surprisingly, we do have a nice high powered resistor over here. Um, but once again, input protection sorely lacking on this meter. Uh, no PTC, no mob, nothing. Uh, so it's kind of scary, but uh, well, you know what it is? <laughs> Moving up, we have the main IC, which is COP. That is doing everything. I don't even see a relay on this meter. So all of the brains are coming off that main IC, and I have no idea what it is, unfortunately. But, uh, well, there you go. For NCV, we've got this extruding protrusion. Uh, nice metal filament. Um, and that is housed right beside the buzzer. Uh, so ooh, super close here in terms of, uh, you know, placement. But once again, it is a small meter, so you don't have a lot of real estate on this PCB. Here is that uh, LED flashlight. And yeah, that is it. That is all. Over at the top over here, that is our EEP ROM. That is from Foodie Microelectronics 2K Serial EEP ROM, the HE 24C02. The brains, well, not the brains, but you know, it stirs all the good info for the main IC. On the reverse side, as you can see, not much going on. It's pretty bare bones here. Uh, yeah, well, this is a pretty bare bones multimeter. So there you have it, folks. Uh, I'm gonna put it back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the ending M167. Me, you got it. Pass this one by. There's plenty better out there. Typically ho hum in the multimeter department. It does quite a few things okay, but really doesn't do anything great. No capacitance, no LED, no diode, lame continuity, and you know what? The list goes on. It's just a very uh, not much likable meter. And in terms of input protection, whoa, yeah. Not much going on there. Keep this down on low voltage. That's it. That's all. Wasn't the cheapest meter either. Yeah, it's a cheapo, but it still cost me about 25 bucks Canadian. Way too expensive for what you're getting. Uh-uh. Stick your money elsewhere. In fact, stick it anywhere. Just not anywhere near the M167. The Anning M167 gets a very depressing two out of five stars. Oh, Anning, again, you've disappointed us. I'm hoping for better things in the future. I really am. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.